Just a quick video regarding KVMs. I know some of you guys, I'm sure you're using KVMs to switch between different computers so you can access the keyboard, mouse, and video screen. Now, in the old days, these were physical boxes that you would wire both or multiple computers into and then you would switch them using a physical switch. Well, nowadays, you can do all of this stuff over the internet. So what I have gone and done, because I have a server, remember I told you about my own server that I've built for our business, which is in a data center. It was built using custom components, mostly PC components. And so the motherboard doesn't have the KVM capability, the remote KVM capability built into the motherboard, which is mostly what you would get on uh, motherboards or from server, commercial server grade kind of equipment. So mine doesn't have that. So in order for me now to be able to reset the server, I can only do that through a software reset. Now, how do I get over that problem? Well, I've gone and bought myself one of these. One of these, right? Up here, actually. K Pi KVM, Pi KVM version 4. This has the Raspberry Pi 4 module in it. And this comes as a complete kit. So I'm going to do an unboxing because I just got that now. So I'm going to do an unboxing here live. So I just get the, the you know, the case obviously, which is great. You know, um, actually on the back of the case, to show you guys, I don't know if you can zoom in here. Uh, what it says is are the components that are included in, uh, it's a little bit blurry, but these are the components that are in the box. So let's open up the box. And what do we see here? So what do we see here? We see all this. Let me just see if I can zoom in here. So I'll take it out of its packet in a minute. This allows you to connect the control signals on your motherboard. So you know you've got the power reset, soft reset, uh, power on and off on the motherboard. So you can wire those straight into this and this will get wired into the KVM. Um, just a little, I guess that's a, that's a QR code that if you can scan that QR code, it'll take you to their website and the instructions are on the website. And then what else do we have here? This is the plate, the back plate for your server where the, the connector thing will go so that you can actually plug that into your power connectors on your motherboard. And these are the power connectors that you would plug into your motherboard on one end and the other one onto that board. And then we've got uh, a USB, USB 3 to USB-C connector here. Um, and then you got some, some Ethernet cables here. And then the actual unit is here. So I'll take it out and I'll show you guys what that looks like. You've got the, the Ethernet here. You've got the serial console USB 2 connector here. Now, why do we need that? The reason we need that is if we can't access this over the web, we can actually plug in here and get a serial terminal up and running and we can actually access the box and debug it that way. So that's why it's there. It's really a backup. We won't probably need it, but it's there anyway. Now then, there here you have the SD card. This has the software, the Raspberry Pi operating system, and also the KVM software on here. Then you've got power. Now this power is necessary if you're gonna be using an external drive on this, a USB drive. And also it is recommended that you use the power supply that's supplied with this kit and power this unit up. Um, it's just better for it. Um, the USB power may be intermittent, and may be a problem. So it's best to use the external power supply and that's the plug for it. Now on the other side is where you would plug in your HDMI here, which is gonna come from your uh, port on your uh, monitor. This is where you would plug in. Um, so this is really allowing you to actually see what's gonna be on screen. Uh, when the system is booting up. And this is the OTG connector here. Now the reason for having the OTG connector is this is where you will be passing commands back and forth for the mouse and keyboard. That's how you would access the mouse and keyboard. This is a special cable that they provide you with here. Um, and you have uh, the, the uh, so USB-C kind of connector on this side. 
and the other side is a USB uh, standard USB 2 or 3 uh, on your computer so you plug those together and that will allow you to take control of the mouse and the keyboard and of course this is the ATX port now this will allow you through that special board that I've got here actually where is it here it is this one I showed you earlier this will actually let me take it out of the, the bag and show you guys what it looks like So this actually allows you to plug in uh, the control signals. So you can just see that here. I just uh, oh, come on camera, zoom. There you go. So it can't, it can't, it's not really picking it up. Anyway, so basically what you have is four connectors on here for four different functions. So you got the power. So this allows you to actually toggle the power on your computer physically like you were at the panel, the power button, because that's, that's where the power control is going to go. You've got the LED for the, H, uh, for the hard drive. You plug that in so you can see the LED flashing remotely on your, uh, uh, on your, on your terminal when you're accessing the KVM remotely. This is the uh, power for the... Uh, this is for the power for the LED. So, you know, you have a power on and off. You can see if it's green or red, and that's the power LED. And then on the last one is the reset button, the hard reset button. So basically, you can turn it off and on, the power itself, to the board. You can toggle that, or you can do a soft reset or a hard reset on the motherboard without turning the power off. And then you can get the status signals from the LED using this interface. So that would actually plug in onto your motherboard on that side, and then the other side, would through a cable plug in from uh, this side to that side that's how it would work so other than that uh, you have your little display up here so this is a little led display that will give you some status information of the network ip address and maybe some other status information i haven't actually turned it on so i really don't know but that's kind of really handy as well. Although for me, I'm just, it's going to go inside the server. I'm not going to see this. But if you had it, let's say, at home and it was accessible, the server was accessible to you, then you could actually look at this and it will show you some status information. And mostly for debugging, really. They've just put this in. So that's the actual physical box. Really nice um, from this company. Uh, and it says designed in Canada. Can't read it here. Designed and made in Canada. And PIKVM, that's the name of the company. So awesome, looking forward to installing that in my server and in the data center and then plugging that in. And I will show you the software, how I operate the software and how easy it is to monitor and manage your server remotely. So I've got this uh, IKVM plugged in and you can see it's actually plugged into my server at home. You've got your Ethernet, it's already given me an IP address and I've got the power connected and of course I've got the HDMI on that side and I've got the uh, OTG cable connected here. So I should be able to now go to this IP address in my network and be able to log in and see the actual web interface. I'm going to do that now and show you guys. Hi folks, so this is the software for the Pi KVM. So this software is very straightforward really to operate. So I'm going to go through it with you guys just quickly. Um, I'm going to show you the login screen. So this is the login screen. So when you plug it into your local area network and if you have DHCP uh, server, this is uh, the IP address is actually not hardwired. It's not uh, a dedicated IP address, not a fixed IP address. It's, it's a dynamic IP address which is given to the board uh, via DHPC server. So when you plug it into your network, if you've got a router, it will give it an IP address. So I've, I've been given that. This is on my home network. So it, it gave me an IP address. So I've just gone to that IP address, open a browser, type in the IP address of the server that you've been given. By the way, that IP address is also on the little display unit. So when you plug it in, give it a few minutes, it will boot up. And on the display, it will show you the IP address that has been given. So you take that IP address and then you plonk it into a browser and this is what you would get. So what I've done is now the standard password and username, I've changed it. 
it's admin admin but i've changed it and also i've enabled two-factor authentication on this particular device so uh, the the username is admin i haven't changed that but the password i have actually changed and uh, i have to give it now the two-factor authentication code so that we can log into this server so let's do that eight nine seven and there it is it brings you to this screen so the, the it's good to put two-factor authentication in here uh, particularly if you're going to be exposing this to uh, the internet or, or whatever um, so you're going to be presented with this screen and you have a couple of options you've got the kvm screen which is going to then show you the actual screen of your device whatever it's connected to your pc or your server or whatever device you've got it connected to through the hdmi port which you've plugged into this unit you also get this this button here which is terminal so we'll put that in here and then what that's going to do is it's going to take you to the shell of the kvm linux operating system the pi operating system from raspberry pi and it gives you a shell into it so what we're going to do is that's not necessary but that will be necessary if you want to issue some commands um, that you need to issue particularly if you're setting up two-factor authentication or if you want to tweak the software you need to go to the shell so we're going to leave that for now and we're going to go back to our login here and we're going to show you the screen so this is basically what you're going to see now what you're seeing here is my unraid server it's just a command line so you're not going to see anything as you can see so i'll just clear the screen so you're not going to see anything because this is not a windows machine it's actually a linux machine running unraid which is basically a hypervisor kind of environment which you can run docker containers and vms and so on so that's what it, that's what i'm going to see on my actual screen if i was going to log into it from the actual pc itself so let me show you a couple of little things. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. Um, okay, so let's just zoom in to here. Let's just, uh, we'll have to do it this way, zoom in. So what we've got here on this side is some controls. We've got the log. Now the log is the log of what the Pi is doing. So it's really, you know, the log file of what the operating system is doing. So this is useful if you're doing debugging. And it's going to look like a little, like, little bit like this, all right? So it's going to show you what, 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 what's actually happening in the operating system. Again, we're not, really we're not really interested in this, but you might be interested. If you're technical and you want to do debugging, something's not working, and you made some changes, you can figure out what is happening in the operating system by looking at the logs. So let's go back here and let's have a look down here. Now, you've got terminal. You can open up another terminal in, in within this environment if you want to access the terminal. You got to go to sudo. You got to go to super user, right? By typing. If you want to issue some, you know, root commands, you got to log in as root. Um, but you can get this window within a window. Um, then what you have is uh, about us, and then you got these controls. I would leave these controls alone. Typically, this is actually the JPEG quality of the the streaming uh, that that you're going to get from that device over the internet i'd leave it at 80 percent that's fine this is frame rates 40 percent is more than enough uh, to get you a good user experience and that's the codec that they're currently using this is the codec the h264 codec leave that alone um, it, it's a kilobit speed basically that's transmitting the information the video information leave that alone and also for this as well leave that alone as well the uh the gop the and the video mode, again, leave that alone. No need to change it. You can play around with it if you want. Orientation, if you want to orientate the screen, if you're on a, a device that requires the orientation, which is different from your typical, you know, sort of monitor, you can, you can play around with these. I, I wouldn't do that. You can also pipe sound straight to you remotely if you have a device that has a sound card. And particularly if you're running Windows or, or something like that, or a gaming machine remotely and you want the sound you can actually get that sound piped over to you as well and then you got my uh, the mouse mode relative or absolute that's the positioning of the mouse on the screen as you can see it's very fluid and very fast i'll leave it alone uh, connect main usb to server that's already on so you have a usb port that you can connect external devices to 
exer external flash drives too. Uh, I'd leave that alone. I, I don't really use that, but you can use that if you want. Uh, LED, enable lo locator LED. Again, I've just left all these as they are. I haven't touched them. You can actually show the, uh, the keyboard on screen if you wanted to. Uh, again, I just don't need to do that. Just, but if you are on a, let's say you're on remotely on a tablet or something, and you're accessing this on a tablet, you might want to bring up a virtual keyboard like this. Um, what else? Uh, you've got you got your monitor. This is the stream is active. That's just saying that you know you're getting data for the screen. You're getting data, f and that's just saying it's connected. And that's the keyboard. Um, then we we've got the keyboard connected. Keyboard free. Okay, that keyboard is free. That means that you can plug in an external keyboard, but I'm not doing that. I'm just using my keyboard and sending commands via the OTG cable. Uh, this is actually the ATX uh, controls I showed you earlier. This allows you to physically long press or short press, connect uh, the or toggle the power, the power button on the actual. If you've got this connected on your motherboard, you can toggle the power. And also, um, you can you know the click the uh, long pause or the short pause. So if you want to do a quick pause, do a reset, you can do a short pause or you can do a long pause. And you can also reset as well. These are all going to be on the jumpers that you're going to put on your motherboard. I haven't done that because this is a test, test server. This is very interesting. This is a drive. So you can actually have images. You can upload here. You can upload your ISO image from wherever you are remotely and reboot your PC with that image. So, and you can, or you can post a URL that you can download from on the internet, uh, an ISO. These will be held locally in this repository. There's nothing here at the moment. And that's the actual space that you've got available. 22 gigs of storage where you can keep ISOs if you want to do a reboot of your operating system remotely. Very powerful. I'm not going to use this because I'm running, you know, Proxmox and I'm not going to touch that. It's a server for our business. But, you know, you can use that for your personal home lab or if you're playing with something, uh, a client side or something, you can use this for your clients if you wanted to, if you're running a business. Macros, that just basically allows you to run commands. So that, for instance, I've got commands that I'm repeating. You can record those commands and you can replay them. It just saves you a bit of time. Text, you can send some text directly to your remote system by entering it here, and it will be sent across to the KVM. Yeah, so please note the KVM can't switch the keyboard layout. So you gotta bear this in mind. This is the keyboard it conforms to. So that's what you can do. Uh, these are shortcuts you can configure as well so that you can navigate the interface. That's basically, that's it really. That's the interface. Um, for me, I just want I just want a bit of satisfaction that when I'm actually rebuilding the server, uh, that I'm actually seeing what's happening. And also, it allows you to go into your BIOS. I'm not going to go into my BIOS here, but you can actually go into your BIOS and make changes to the BIOS, which you won't be able to do if you were just doing a, a software reset. So that's what this allows you to do remotely. It's a bit of an overkill, but it's still useful if you've got some major issues and there's a problem with the BIOS or you need to configure the BIOS or you want to just see that your operating system is coming up gracefully when you've done a cold reset. That's it from me. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it educational. There's lots of information about this product on the internet. There's loads of people who've done other videos. So Pi KVM, do a search on Google, do a search on YouTube and you'll find loads of loads of videos and lots of information about how to set it up. If you want to do you know, the two-factor authentication, go to their website and you can actually find information here on their website on how to actually manage and control. This is also the ATS control board, shows you how to configure it. It's very comprehensive, this information. I urge you to go and have a look at it and play with it. But it's very simple to, to set up. I just plugged it in and it just worked first time. So all the best. To anybody else who's playing with this, I've had a great experience with it. I'm going to use it on my server in the data center. And uh, if you have any comments about it, if you have any questions about it, you put them into the comments field and I'll see if I can answer them for you. If not, hope you enjoyed the video. Have yourself a great day. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.